So I got a great question today from a young man who goes on to ask, yo, Elliot, how do I remain non-reactive or stoic in general and in the face of stress? And so I really love this question because it gives me an opportunity to sort of unfold or unpack this idea that I've been digesting over the past year or so. And it all begins with Carl Jung's idea of the quadrated psyche, right? The mind, he says, is split up into four parts. And he says that, you know, every one of us are operating out of one of or a combination of these four parts. We're either thinking, feeling, doing, or being, right? So it's one of those four things. When you ask me about reacting, it's going to be one of those four things it's going to, you're going to react with. If you take those four and you superimpose Robert Moore, who is a neo-Jungian, his concept of the mature masculine on it, what you're going to get is the king, warrior, magician, and lover. And so every time that we're thinking, we're accessing our magician. Every time that we're doing, we're accessing our warrior. Every time that we're feeling, we're accessing our lover. But every time that we're being, right, because remember, that was one of the four, we're accessing our king. And to be in our fullness as men, we want to access our kings. And so you might ask yourself, well, how do you go about doing that, Elliot? Well, that's the wrong question, because if you're doing, you're operating from your warrior, which is fine. It's good. Things need to be done. But you're not doing anything. You don't do being, right? You don't do kinging or throning, which I'll tell you what it means in a moment. What do I, and then, you know, the next thing that we do is we go to thinking about it. Well, where do I get more information about that? Who do I need to ask about that? What audio book or uh, Kindle book or podcast or video can I watch to learn more about that? Now we're accessing the lower mind, the magician mind. And then what do you feel about it, right? Because most of our reaction, most of what we think and do actually first zaps into our being through the feeling. Ooh, there's a crisis. Ooh, I feel stressed. I feel angry. I feel upset. I feel sad. I feel joyful, pleasure, whatever it is. You got to understand that being is none of those things. So if you want to know how to access your king, which is exactly what you're asking me in terms of how not to be reactive, you first got to recognize what it's not. It's not thinking about something, right? So there's a crisis. Don't think about it, right? There's nothing to think about. For the most part, our thinking is born of obsession and usually wrapped up in a whole lot of junk from the outside, past things, things that we project into the future, stuff we saw on TV, stuff that we heard on the internet, something that somebody said to us. Most of our thinking is not serving us because it doesn't come from Stillness, it's a form of activity, not action. It's not feeling anything, and it's not doing anything. It's being, and so that sounds so crazy, right? Like so mystical. What the hell does that mean? What do you mean just be, Elliot? How is anything going to get done if you're just being? What am I supposed to do if I'm just being? How do I approach this situation if I'm just being? Well, you know what not to do. So here's how the king operates, right? You've got four modes of operation. And to be is to, like I like to tell my king transformation clients, throning. People like to say meditating. I don't like to use that word anymore. Throning. I don't like that word meditation for a lot of reasons. It's, it's wrapped up in a whole lot of associations that I don't think really serves us. Throning is a lot different. Throning is like when you imagine a king and his essence is to sit. He's sitting on his throne. And it doesn't mean that things aren't coming at him. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have crises. It doesn't mean that there, there's not some imminent threat that's trying to stir him. It's that he sits in the stillness of his suffering. He breathes into his balls is basically what I'm saying. The king then, in all his stillness, allows the path to be revealed. Revelation is the fruit of being. Because you're not thinking about it. Remember, thinking usually comes from past jump, stuff that's happened in the past. All of our feelings come from past jump. It comes from unresolved trauma, issues with our mama, and all kinds of attachments that we have to sensuality. Don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't trust your feelings. And there's nothing to do. Most of our doing is not pure action, or like the Buddhists say, right action, 
coming from stillness. It's usually born of anxiety. Most of our quote unquote action is really activity, which is born out of fear uh, and, anx and anxiety, a neediness to, to get something going, right? We get a sense of power by doing research, by doing something, going to, I gotta do something, uh, or just being wrapped up in our feelings, all of which are ungrounded, all of which are void of the king quality, the being quality. So then revelation becomes our fruit, becomes the way that we operate. Now you may say to yourself, even still, Elliot, you're talking about all this being crap, you're talking about being a king, sitting on your throne in revelation, where is this going? Revelation is very clear. Revelation is very eminent. V Revelation is what's being revealed to you, what's right in front of your eyes. If only you stop thinking, right? So something happens and you get wrapped up in thinking, oh, what, what should I do? What, what should I have done? Or, you know, what kind of information can I pull from? What YouTube video can I search? You move away from that, you move away from being wrapped up in your feelings, and you move away from the anxiety and the neediness to, to do something, fidget, which is really most of the time what it is, and you just open your eyes. That's literally what revelation is. Revelation is literally like, it's not something very mystical. It's look at what's right in front of you. Most of the times, if there's a crisis, if we just stop, sit, and open our eyes, the path is revealed right in front of us. It's usually right there or it just takes a little shift in perspective. Notice, I'm not talking about getting up off of your seat, coming off of your throne. Sit in the stillness, suffer in the silence, but open your eyes and take a different perspective, right? Let me look at this from a different angle so it can be revealed to me what to do. So this is just a, this is just a concept I'm sort of I'm working with and I'm teaching my men and I think might be helpful to us. A lot of the times we, uh, we face issues and I know I've been there. I've been there. Most of the stuff I talk about to you guys is because I've been there. We face something and we get this, this need to, and especially for me, I'm like an action taker. I want to do stuff. You get this need to, like, I got to go do something about it right away, right? Men, that's, it's sort of a part of our, the, the, the deep warrior which is I want to bring this to a conclusion right away. The faster you want to bring something to a conclusion, right? Or I want to mull over it. I want to think over it. I get it. It's a good idea, I guess, to get facts, to get information. But a lot of times the facts, the information, and the advice that we get from people, a lot of times they are, it's their dead weight. A lot of times the information is dead weight. Like think, for example, with this, with this coronavirus or this China virus going on right now. I get it. A lot of us, we're wrapped up in trying to get more information about it, watching more videos about it, reading more articles about it, getting on the news about it. It does not reveal anything to us about how to be in the circumstances. It's mind masturbation. Most of our thinking things through, getting information, getting the facts is mind masturbation. Unless you're a scientist and you're actively working on the thing. Most of us, we're not. We're just looking for something to play with in our brain. I've said this before, that I've changed my mind on terms of feeling. I used to say, you got to trust your feeling, get into your feelings, because I always taught that. I thought that was true. And most of us in our feminine world as men, we've been taught to get in touch with our feminine side, which is the feeling side. And I'm telling you right now that it does not serve. They, there are those who like to say, I used to be one of them, that it uh, gives you access to your intuition. It doesn't give you access to intuition. It does not, because revelation is more powerful than intuition. Because revelation is, is practical. Intuition is about what's going on on the inside of me. And a lot of times, in terms of being a man, it doesn't matter what's going on inside you. What matters is what's being revealed in front of you so that you can take right action on it. If we operate as warrior kings, meaning like, I'm gonna bring those two qualities to the forefront. It starts with the king. It starts with being still in the face of struggle and suffering. Just breathing into it and sitting. And then right action from the warrior, meaning, boom, I see what needs to be done. And then you think nothing about it. You don't have any more thoughts about it. You don't need a feeling. You don't need to feel like you want to go do it. You just do it. 
almost like a cat. I like to like I like to give this example of a cat. Like cats are are interesting. They'll just sit. They just sit still. Boom! I got two cats. And a lot of the day, a lot of the day, they just sitting there. They're just like this. But as soon as there's a loud noise, boom! They get up and they know exactly where to go, what to do. They don't think about it. They're they they respond rather than react. All right? Response is from a place of stillness. Reaction is from a place of angst. So to come full circle to your question, my man, because that was a that was a lot of fun for me to sort of unfold that idea there for you guys, and maybe it's resourceful to you. The very and here I'm going to wrap it up in this one uh, phrase by uh, uh, um, the author. Uh, what's his name? He's right here. Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey, in one of his books, says that between stimulus. And response, there's a space. And in that space is your power. That space is sitting on your throne. Feelings are going to come. Thoughts are going to come. The impetus to take action is going to come. But allow that space. Give yourself that space. Sit in that space and allow the path to be revealed to you. It's not very mystical. You just got to open your eyes. Done.